Yeah. 2017, coming to get you. You really are, aren't you? I am on, I'm on it. This year's my year. Last year, year was... Last year was your year as well. Yeah. 2015 was pretty shit, actually. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Will you? Melting down, not here, not now. <laughs> cool beans, here we are again. Uh, slipping and sliding into 2017. Yep. Um, I was just joking before. I am po I'm positive about it all. Are you? Yeah. Just a little bit of a meltdown there. Happy New Year to you, though. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Well, not you then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh but anyway, we're, we're bringing you into the new year with an inspirational interview from Dinosh Bennett. And inspirational is the word when you listen to um, how incredible her career has been from beginning to end. Yeah, I mean, she talks about her experience with nodules, which I'm sure a lot of people have experienced in their lifetime. She uh, then goes on to an incredible story about how a successful audition to become Mariah Carey's dancer led on to her being background vocalist for people like Timbo, Rihanna, and most recently, Robbie Williams. And lastly, we have a listener question where she answers how how do you become the vocal chameleon that you need to be to be a background vocalist, switching from role to role and the demands that that brings? So inspirational, educational, motivational. We're in it. So. Yeah, so that's all you need to know. Oh, as a matter of fact, as well, just so you know, we had a, a couple of um, camera failures on this recording. Sorry. So we're going to jump in at certain points back to us here, which is really exciting. Is it? In a way. And, uh, and we're going to offer the question that we asked Dinosh at that time, because luckily we still have her camera. I don't know what was going on that day, but... No, but it'll still be... It'll be fine. Magical. Just, just deal with it, all right? But uh, before you go, uh, please uh, do leave us a re review on iTunes and share us wherever you can. Like we said, we're here with Dinosh Bennett, who's already dying under the pressure. I really like how you guys say my name, the emphasis on the shh, Dinosh. Oh, is it, is it normally a little bit more... Uh, you know, Americans glancy. are very like open with the ah, Dinosh, so you put the emphasis ah, on the yeah. shh, which I like. It's very yeah, sexy, Dinosh. All Americans like that, don't they? Like, that's the Queen's English, that's how yeah. she would have said Dinosh it. Dinosh Bennett. Dinosh Bennett. Yes. Um, who is uh, <laughs> um, a multi-talented individual of... I mean, I'm going to reel them off, but goodness me, like... Super duper backing vocalist. Thank Me you. Mega sesh vocalist, session Thank vocalist. You. Vocal coach, Thank writer, you. Thank tourer. You. Thank you. Fun loving. Yes. <laughs> and, and Vegan. Irritating. Um, I'm nice. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. I like it over here. Yeah, yeah. We don't get dicks on here, do we? Yeah, no. No, no. Sorry. I think we might have had a few. Uh, shall we remain There's nameless? Uh, <laughs> always here. Yeah. Yeah, ready to go. But over to you, Dinosh. Like, uh, tell us a bit about. Um, me. What you do in more detail. Yeah. Well, you guys met me through the, 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 the camps and stuff like that, the summer, the intensives that we've done in L.A. Um, as a coach. And um, I kind of became a coach because of all the things that I've just sort of naturally artistically done over the years. Um, I started out singing in, in church choirs, very young age, um, as a lot of us do. How young? Um, I think we were called like the bright and morning stars, the morning stars or something. I think I was about eight or nine. It was like a children's choir and then moved into like a sort of a teen choir and things like that. Um, didn't really start training my voice until I was about 16 where I was preparing for a show. I was, I'm from Toronto originally. So I did a lot of stuff in the Toronto music scene, um, in my late teens and kind of got my start there. Um, and worked with a vocal coach there because I was, I guess, never been trained and I'd never really studied it. So I was getting a little bit of vocal 
what they called pre-nodular irritation. And mm. he's like, if you keep singing like this, you're going to develop that. So I worked with this guy, um, and he got me right. And so I was doing a lot of shows as an, as an artist, as an up-and-coming independent artist in Toronto. Um, simultaneously, I was going to school, and I was choreographing, and I was dancing uh, for the Toronto Raptors as well, and was dance captain, doing a lot of choreography. So I Play was kind of doing... <laughs> oh, okay, well, back in America, uh, the, the, it's the NBA, the national basketball team. Right. But Toronto and Vancouver at that time, they'd expanded to Canada. So we were super excited. And instead of doing, like, the typical sort of cheerleaders, we did a dance squad. Um, which we still had to follow kind of format, but it was all dance routines. And it was all, like, hip-hop and jazz, which was, that was my wheelhouse. So I was really excited about doing that. Going to school as a journalism student and performing in the Toronto scene as a recording artist, as an artist. But I always had a dream to move to New York because as, as a dancer, um, I always wanted to be in New York. And I thought about Broadway and that's where I saw my career taking off. I was going to be on Broadway, but then get a record deal in. It was all just going to happen. Um, so I left school after two years because I was pretty bored. And to, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no one Glad told, well, no one told me like you could go to school for uh, music. Like no one encouraged that. I was just like, right, I'm going to get a, you know, do the sensible thing in school and then do the unsensible thing out of school. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be a musician and then I'll be a journalist. After two years, I was like, I want to go to New York. Um, so I did. And I started on a professional career as a dancer, as a professional dancer. Um, I was still singing, but I had to reintroduce myself in the American industry and uh, no one knew who I was or anything like that, but I had some songs and stuff like that. So um, I started my career as a dancer. I booked my first tour. It was sort of an open cattle call um, with Mariah Carey, and that was in 1997. And I... So just for clarity, how many people <laughs> were at that open audition? Oh, my gosh. Well, so this rehearsal space is called SIR. It's on 52nd Street, and it's ma like it's massive. Um, I would say, I would say hundreds of people of girls and these are all people like that have done gigs and like these are the singers and I was just I just went to meet Debbie Allen because she's my like I just I look up to her and she's just someone whose career I've always wanted to have a career like hers so I was like she's holding the auditions I just want to go and lo and behold I made it through all the cuts and I made it to the end and I was offered the tour wow um yeah so that was so a dream come true I know this is probably you know we should we should let you let you no continue with the tour. <laughs> no but, no anyway, but we can do that in a second yeah. and sorry if this is very rude to be jumping in but what was it that is that the verbal finger <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, actually, we're actually opening up the can of words to say Yes. Yes. Going, no see no don't do actually. don't do that don't do that sorry well it quite you know it's it's um the point is, what is what was it that made you the one or the one of a few there um, at that time? With you being so, I mean, you, you sound like you were surprised that you got the part. Oh, shocked! So, what was it about you that? Well, I had gone when I was in high school. I went to professional art school. I was a dance major. Mm. I didn't finish. I got kicked out of school. Um, so my, I had to really fight for my technical training for the next two years where my friends had it every day in school. Mm. I went to a normal high school, which was like death to me. Um, but it made me work harder outside of school, like offering to clean dance studios and things just so I could take lessons and really had to fight for, um, getting my training elsewhere. And my, my parents couldn't really afford it. Um, so when I got to the audition, I just felt... Technically, I mean, there were girls, I literally were stood in lines, and Debbie Allen, who's very technical, and she was like, double pirouette, développé, and I could give you a great solid double. My développé, as far as my dance technique, was at like, maybe a hundred degree angle, like not quite is, a 90. Is this, is this a foreign language? She, so, so, well, so, so if I'm holding my leg up, think of my arms are my legs. So, sure. I, there are girls whose legs are up here. Okay. I was giving you that. Okay. So technically, I wasn't like... That with a pained face as well. Oh, oh, no, no, no. I had the iron face. I was like, yes. And my nails were done. And it's funny, after I did mine, she was like, nice nails. I was like, okay. That's all I've got. That's, that's, <laughs> listen, but I was, gonna, I was like, ah, this is it. I'm going to give you everything I have. Um, so there was a couple different, to get to the point, there was a couple different cuts of uh, styles of dance. The first one was just sort of jazz. She wanted to see how you walk. She wanted to see personality performance. The second up was, second one was line up. I want to see technique. Can you give me a double pirouette? I want to see your extension. Um, the third cut was a hip hop dance routine, and then the last one 
was a uh, was was ballroom was salsa Latin. I was more of a Latin freestyler, so I just faked my way through that. I was definitely more of a hip hop dancer, so I don't know how I made the cut after my développé and my double pirouette. But I think she just I don't know. I think she just saw. I think I really think my attitude carried forward, um, my look maybe, and what she was trying to put together, and. I, I, I don't know. I think but some I like things that are just. Story, I like the fact that that you, you being yeah. the um, very you're very aware mm -hmm. of the industry, and you were at that age. Yeah. And and you saw it as there's so many people that are technically yeah more proficient, but yeah. actually it's not always that right it's not always that it's it's definitely that will i feel like that will carry you through and um but the good thing about that tour is it wasn't all about the technique mm -hmm. it ne she needed i think she hired 10 i think it was 10 dancers and she needed girls who were well-rounded mm -hmm. and i think she also was looking to hire new people and so there were a lot of girls who were at that audition who were like you thought they would get the job because they were in all the music videos and they danced for this one and none of those girls booked the job so i think there was a couple of things that she just mm -hmm. maybe wanted a new crop of faces this young new talent and sometimes that those opportunities do happen so that was the beginning of my career in america and um i then went on to do several other tours um with uh brandy um p diddy um i did a lot of different music videos with um Jay-Z, uh, Missy Elliott, I danced for her quite a bit. Um, 112, a lot of R&B, hip hop, um, Aaliyah, um, the video, sadly, where she passed away. And um, yeah, and then I, I just sort of, uh, during that time, I was like, all right, I need to get back to this music thing. And I would always talk to the background singers on tours and the musical directors and kind of let them know what I was doing. It's the hustle. Mm -hmm. And eventually I met a producer on the Brandy tour who, uh, took an interest in me and and we started working together and that started to bring me back into the music industry so that was about two and a half years after I'd moved um, and then since then I uh, and then in about 2002 I was dancing for an artist who eventually heard me sing uh, we were on a tour bus and I sang for her I was we were all singing some Stevie Wonder and she heard me and she made it a point to to express that she you know she liked my voice and she was interested in working with me. Um, she eventually offered me the ability to tour a sing background for her, and that was my first background gig. And the struggle for me was because I was a professional dancer and people knew that I was proficient in that and successful in that. They didn't think that I was a good singer, and no one really wanted to give me a chance. So I always credit her, Faith Evans. Um, who's a bad boy artist, for giving me that opportunity. And I then sang for her, which then opened up doors um, to be able to work with, uh, to, to do Hairspray on Broadway, um, to uh, sing background for Justin Timberlake uh, after that for about 10 years. Um, and now I've sort of, I've been of transitioned in, into this world of BVs. Um, I don't want to do the just name, but I, I know that that's part of what you what come on what you want to hear. Who but else? Uh, well, um, I've been really lucky, and that's actually what's what's really cool is when I started working with Justin because he has such a big dance component, and I know and I'd worked with a lot of his dancers. We were able to tie in choreography into what we did, and that really changed things for me in my career, where I was able to like be singing background, but being able to dance and do choreography. Um, and I was able to do that with Rihanna, with Alicia Keys, and now... And you, you and took on that responsibility of choreographing? Yeah, yes and no. We did a promo run where the da there were no dancers. And I'm just like, look, I, I don't stand still. Like, I'm going to be, I'll give you some, I need to do something. <laughs> so we kind of made up some moves. And then I think Marty Kadalka, the choreographer, he saw what we were doing and was like, oh, right, I remember. Okay, cool. So... Now he's like, okay, I can give the dance, I can give the singers moments with what we're doing with the dancers. And so we kind of worked together. Um, I mean, I came up with a couple of little things, but nothing like major. And then they were able to give us choreography because now they could see. And it just, it created just this amazing, um, and that was for the Future Sex Love Show. And um, well, it started with the Justify tour and then it developed bigger into the Future Sex Love Show. And so, yeah, it just, I think that was for me like I was like okay this is this is what I this is really it for me as far as doing backing vocals and being on stage and being able to marry the two worlds and I think a trend started to happen where 
people were starting to need this from backing vocalists, where they needed to be able to dance and move, and, and people knew that if they hired me, they would get that. Um, so I was able to do that with Demi Lovato as well. And now, coming full circle, uh, doing backing vocals with Robbie, which has brought me here to London. We just did the Apple's iTunes Festival. And that's been a really big part of um, his new show. I've been working with him for four years, and it started off as a one-off. And I didn't know anything about him. I mean, I knew a little bit, but he wasn't in the rehearsals. And I was like, oh, he got some funky stuff. I, like, that's one thing I remember. I mean, he was just really funky and cheeky and very energetic. And I heard the music and I was just like, oh, and I said to the other backing vocalist, I was like, I hope you don't mind doing choreography. She's like, no, 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 I'm down. I was like, cool. So I just made up some stuff, just some grooves. And he came into rehearsal and saw us grooving and he just jumped right in and was like, yeah, this is it. <laughs> he <laughs> seems like that kind of guy. No, he it? did. And then we went, we did this gig and he hadn't done, he hadn't performed live in like, I think about four years, uh, three years. I think he took a break in 2009 or something. And we just killed it. And he was like, we came off stage, he was like, you girls are awesome, do you guys, I want you guys to come on tour. And it's been four years Amazing. working with them. Really so great. it's been a lot of fun and we've been able to bring in different choreographers. Um, I've choreographed some bits, they've brought in people to sort of add to that and we've been able to take the show to a whole other level. So it's been, it's been great and you know, in between that, I've been able to take my performance experience, my industry experience, my experiences of what to do, what not to do, um, having vocal injuries and all that type of stuff throughout this whole journey and being able to like just give little talks and workshops and mentor people, people who want to get into the industry, um, you know, doing performance workshops and things like that. So the, the career has definitely taken on a different turn far beyond my dream, wildest dreams and put me in a position that I never really imagined thinking that I would just be this singer. And it's been so much more than that. So. It's been it's been a great journey, and so I'm really happy to be here and share it with you guys. And okay, sorry. That was about, that was about thirty seconds short of. <laughs> yeah. I made it. <laughs> Whoa! I had set an alarm. Let's just set an alarm. Yeah. Yeah. Set alarm. Reset one because we need to get going again. Yeah, now. This yeah, is yeah. Nailed, yeah. yeah. But that, that, at no point was that boring. Thank you. Okay, yeah. cool. At least it wasn't boring. <laughs> so on from there. Yeah. Um, with all of that experience. Yeah. Mm. Well, that background. Uh, have you, has anything ever come your way where you thought something was the right way to do something or somebody told you something that seemed really cool to begin with? Yeah. But then actually wasn't and turned into a bit of a myth mm. for you? I think those myths for me pertain mostly to like vocal health and things like that. Um, the scarf around the neck. I'm on the tour bus being dramatic, like, it's too cold, I need this scarf, and, you know, but then I was told that it doesn't really do much. So I don't know, what's yeah. your take on that? I know I know what you mean, like, because um, what what I kind of derive from what you said there is, like, some people are wrapping a scarf around their neck when probably they could do with doing the basics first. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, my voice is knackered, I better warm it up. It's like, no, you just, just there's, no, the there's no other voice care going on. Like, right. no, no water, <laughs> loads of coffee, probably smoke. Yeah, yeah, train. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the scarf yeah. isn't quite going to do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, still percentage, it's pretty... One 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 point five percent of <laughs> you know. If you've got everything else in order, then that's a right. scarf on. <laughs> right. Yeah, if you live in the Arctic friggin' circle as well. <laughs> right. yeah, go for it. But so. it's pretty cold in Toronto, isn't it? Yeah, and I think for me the, the 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 biggest thing, and I was telling you about just having a bit of trouble warming up earlier, um, is that changing environment so much. And I, I've actually over the years of, and having a couple of vocal injuries and things like that. Um, just just being really attuned to vocal health and the, how your environment can affect you. And I know my voice is much more sensitive than others. Like I work with an artist who just smoked all the time, smoked everything. And when that person would get on stage, it was like angels flying out of their throat. Really? I was like, how do you do that? Mm. And another voc a back backing vocalist never warmed up. And she was like what I call like a natural soprano. She also didn't have any like mm, in her voice, but she was like, 9 a.m. in the morning, like, you know, Snow White singing to... Is it Snow White that was singing to the birds? Don't know. Snow White, one of those, yeah. 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 <laughs> She's probably doing pirouettes as well. Yeah, you know, exactly. What else? What else? <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask, ask your girl, she'll know. <laughs> no. Um, no, she definitely will. <laughs> but, um, and I was like, man. And it, my, 4, 4 p.m. is when I'm like, yes. on my when that's when my voice is warm. So having to like really know what to do to get my voice quicker, like warmed up 
um, better. But I think that that's where that type of stuff came in. And then the other thing is just always having like dry mouth and whatever and drinking water and lozenges. And then that's never really done anything for me either. Mm. What about airplanes? The worst. So I have this mask. Oh, I wish I had it with me. It's awesome. It's called the Vogue mask. And it look and I bought it in black on purpose. So I like to be that weird person. So literally I look like what's that Batman guy from Emily, That's basically. it. What's his oh, name? Okay. No. Yeah, yeah, um Tom Hardy played. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I basically look like Tom Hardy. It's black, it's and it's vegan leather. Kane, isn't it? Vegan. Yeah, leather. something vegan leather. So it's not really leather, but yeah, it's all anyway. Any this is a mask like this and it's got a little like a little thing on it, like a little round the plastic thing that like you to drink to breathe no you don't open it <laughs> and sip through it it's to basically like ventilate whatever um, and you put it over here and it looks like because I used to wear those I used to wear those um, those surgical masks yeah um, but this is actually a mask it's called the Vogue mask and I use that on when I fly um, and a flight attendant once had flown I think he was had flown with Celine Dion and he actually said he recommended a mask to me because she always flies with a mask um, but prior to that my vocal coat my uh, this lady that I was working with in New York told me to get a um, she was like tell, she told me to sip water like throughout the flight but she was like try to get the the, the hot flight attendants to get the hot towel put um, put it in a cup pour like a, what you call it, like steam water and just put it over your face and just inhale that and do that a couple times. So a lot of times I'll get off the plane as I'm do, as I've done this time, and when I get back and go straight to rehearsal, straight to gig, right. and just all of that stuff, those pollutants, that air, which is like horrible for me for an 11 and 11 hour and a half hour journey can be. You know, if you if it's an hour or two, maybe not as much, mm, mm. but then you sleep and it's just like oh, it's just yeah. dry. Does and the mask stuff. stop that? Well, that's actually hard because I put the, so I put the sleep mat. The eye, I'm just completely masked on the plane. Um, but that is hard. Sometimes I feel like I'm suffocating. But eventually, it's really creating this warm air. And so it's kind of like if you were steaming, or if you're in a room and you have a humidifier, and it's just creating that warm air. And it actually really does help. No, I, th I can believe that. I yeah. think every time we fly somewhere, you know, like when we, whenever we go do that long one from yeah. London to LA. Yeah. Um, and we teach, you know, yeah. we're there to teach singing, and my voice is always shot. <laughs> You're like, eh, it's yeah, always shot. It's yeah. always stinging at the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and uh, um, I can see why. I probably used to look at those people years ago and used to think, that's pretentious. <laughs> uh, but now I'm thinking, I'm going to get one. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I um, yeah. I think, I think, <laughs> I think, myth-wise, those are the only things that I've, I've really, you know, anything sort of do's and don'ts. I don't think any. I don't think there's any rules. I think there's, I think there's truth to everything, right? <laughs> If you want a scarf, a scarf on. <laughs> well, now I'm able to like invest in my scarf collection. <laughs> That's the excuse, isn't it? Yeah, but I like it. That for me just is. I'm just I'm always always cold, and sometimes because you have to keep like vo venues are never vocal friendly. Nowhere is vocal friendly like ever. So you just have to do what you need to do. Mm. But like you said, maybe investing in some of the other stuff, like a warm up, and avoiding certain things and dietary things that are really important for me mm. end up helping more than just um, singer and my scarf mm. and and my hot tea and mm. you know there's other things that you could sure. do better to invest in. Mm. Yeah. So if there is anybody out there that is uh, thinking, she's got a cool job. <laughs> um, mm, uh, think again. <laughs> think again. Yeah. Uh, what what skills, in your opinion, does somebody need to do it? Well, first and foremost, you need to be able to sing. <laughs> That's yeah, just yeah, good shout. Well, do you know what? There's a lot of people who um, are not strong vocalists. And I don't mean you have to be the greatest lead singer because there are a lot of great lead singers who aren't not are not great at backing vocals. Um, so you need that flexibility. But um, you, there's just no point. You have to be able to. Your your job is to support. So you have to be on all the time, 24 hours a day. Um, technically and 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 artistically, I think having a really good ear. Um, a lot of. A lot of my work, I think, has come from being able to pick up really fast. You don't have to be a fast learner, but I would say develop a system. You know, some people aren't really good at lyrics, and I'm really good at lyrics. Um, and they're just not off book when they need to be off book. Do you and have a people, tip on that? A tip for your, your favorite lyric learning tip? Write it out. Write it out. Yeah. Do you do that, do you? No. Oh, I don't need to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, if I'm having trouble, sometimes I'm just like, oh. Like, I'll, some lines are just like, the words are so similar, and I'm like, mm, wait a minute. 
And actually, I was learning a new song off the my boss's new album, and I couldn't, like, I just wouldn't. And I kind of relied on my, <laughs> I got it. And I couldn't, I was like, it was like a tongue twister. And I was like, Argh! so I had to literally write it out. And once I did, I was like, okay, cool. Um, but I say write it out because it makes it, I feel like it makes it real. And sometimes if you really understand what the song is about, I'm not saying you need to know, understand every metaphor and everything like that, but if you're just trying to memorize it, sometimes it doesn't sink in, as opposed to, wait, what are they, what's the song about? So like, lines are actually written to make sense. There's a story. Here. Yeah, there's a story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it's like, just, the, it'll, it'll make sense that they did this and then they did this when you're when you've kept do you know what I mean yeah I, uh, I don't know if you've ever read any of Pitbull's rap oh gosh um, but I don't, <laughs> I don't think that, that wouldn't work for that yeah, yeah no, no. Okay, you're definitely going to need to just take a lyric yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 pretty much pretty much uh, but uh, uh, and also you said about your ear um, I, I'm sure there's lots of singers out there that can sympathise with like I'm terrible with harmonies yeah you know? so many people isn't it so many people I mean I got again lucky with just sort of a lot of things were organic for me so being in a church choir from a very young age and always singing I, I was never the solo singer I think I got my first solo when I was about 14 or 15 where a lot of people were already singing so I was pretty solid I mean I love singing harmonies like love it I love the blend I love where you sit so you know, you deal with a lot of dynamics when you deal with choirs and you have to do, when you have to be full and loud and, 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 and we have to crescendo and decrescendo, like that's a major thing. And, and just all those different dynamics you deal with. Um, where now a lot of people don't realize, I think it's just three voices just sing. And, you know, I teach background vocal workshops and things like that. And so we always try to focus on blending and your tone. And one of the things that I learned is singing and I've been lucky in singing for different styles of artists. Um, I'm, I've become pretty good at being a chameleon. If you want to do this, be do backing vocals, your job is to sometimes sound like the artist, or you want to be able to sing for multiple people. So being proficient in different styles, you know, as a singer, I might be an R&B singer, but as a backing vocalist, I've got to sing country, pop, rock, soul, jazz, blues, Whatever, you know what I'm saying? So you can't be an R&B singer on every song. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. You won't work. Um, and I think because I've been able to do that, that's helped me with... Um, so I'm really listening to like... And I just, people don't listen. They just want to sing. They don't listen. And that's frustrating. So not only with regards to pitch and being able to like, you know, use your voice in different ways, um, it's really important to just listen to how things are pronounced and the phrasing of things, breath control, all these different little things technically that are really important. Um, you have to have a good attitude. You have to be professional. You've got to just, you know, you might not be the best singer. I've worked with a ton of people who aren't technically or artistically the strongest, but they're great people to hang around with. Mm -hmm. You know, your attitude goes a long way. If you're being a diva or a divo or being a dick or mm. cocky or, you know what I mean? Like overconfident, not preparing, um, not doing the work you need to do. People just don't want to work with you. They'd rather work with someone nicer that's got a good attitude. Mm -hmm. they get, you know what I mean? So it's a, ba it's a bit of a balance. Um, and you have to, I think you really have to be smart because you never know when your gig is going to come. So there's a certain amount of hustle um, and the right way to hustle, you know, make, let people know what you do. Don't like the, um, what do you call it? When you're not fishing for gigs, but when you're trying to like pluck other people's work from them, um, you know, especially if you're depping on a gig, <laughs> know that you're there to dep and- You walk away. And you walk away and you know, let your work speak for itself. And I've never, I think that's why I've been able to continue to work is I go in and I do good work. Right. If you don't want to hire me again, fair enough, but I will definitely do my best. And I think that um, that goes a long way, just having a really good attitude, but being smart about your business because, again, you never know when the phone's going to ring. You never know when you're going to get a phone call. It's not as easy as just saying, I want to be a singer. It's like, well, okay, it's a real lifestyle. Um, you can get called at any hour, any time, and there's a lot of strain on your voice. And musicians, MDs, they don't really tend to understand that it, 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 this sometimes only works for a certain amount of hours. It only works well when you've rested. It works even better when you've warmed it up. And so having that whole lifestyle around it is really important. Like, that's what's going to allow you to have the longevity in a career. Um, 
and it, it's not for everybody, you know, but I would recommend if anyone that really wanted to get into it, you know, if you've never done it and you like definitely just start with if you can get into a choir or if you can sing background for a friend that's maybe gigging locally or something, just to get the idea because being a solo artist is very different from doing backing vocals where you've got to learn to blend and know when you have to sing out, know when you have to tuck back being able to sing with different voices and stuff. So it comes, it comes with a lot of, uh, is a lot of work. Um, so so for, some, mm -hmm. for someone who actually has all of those skills in place mm -hmm. or is reasonably good at them all. Oh, and last, sorry, really quickly, um, um, being able to read music sometimes. Right. Yeah. And have you got that skill? Do you need it? I, now I do for sure. Um, being, I want to, I want to. I'm trying to spend more time locally in LA and do more session work. Some of those big, like the movie scores, you'll get some sheet music and They'll give you like, all right, here's the G, that's the tonic, and then you're reading from there. And they don't have time. They're like, so you better be able to read those sharps and those flats and then one, three, four, you know, you'd be able to read that. Um, that's definitely, I think, another level of the skill, but if you really want to do this and take that to the next level, and that's where like some of the real good money is. So mm. anyway, just wanted and to add that, that in there. For the Broadway stuff as well? Not for the Broadway stuff. And I actually, we actually did have the sheep music and I wasn't I think I have very basic piano growing up in church I used to read the hymnals and so um the song books and so I I just got used to following cause I don't know half those songs but I would just like oh well this is where we're starting and I would just follow along um but then I actually took a course to brush up on my sight singing and I'm finding a lot of musicians now and singers actually coming from schools like Berkeley and different like probably like Lippa and you know different schools where um they might be teaching they're taking theory, music theory as part of the curriculum um so it's definitely worth knowing or understanding and, and investing in at some point um, because it's only going to give you more op mm. more options and more opportunities. Mm. Yeah. So Sorry. back to my <laughs> unbelievably <laughs> rudely Sorry. Uh, interrupted. No, just joking. Uh, <laughs> yes. um, but, so someone who has all those skills in mm -hmm. place, including sight singing, mm -hmm. you've done a little bit of work for your friends, maybe on the backing vocals. Where would you actually go and look for a big break? Because... Um, speaking to even like previous guests Katie Holmes mm -hmm. and, and other friends in, in the industry mm -hmm. it's very much like an in invitation oh yeah that only certain people hear about absolutely so if you're on the outside absolutely what do you do about that um well it is all it is really all about who you know um I think that you've got to pay your dues so I think if there are LA doesn't have a huge scene as far as like vocal, like places to vocal jam and things like that, but anywhere you can be in touch with some musicians and things like that, like people need to know what you do. They need to know who you are and they need to see you. Like more than in just saying, hey, I'm such and such and such and such, back that up with performing somewhere or, you know, taking the initiative. A lot of people just want to be invited to do it and it's like, well, there's already so many people, like, you have to kind of prove yourself. So that's the first thing that I would say. And, you know, and, and but you've got, you've got to be social, too. You've got to, like, go to those places, hang out, see who's who. At some point, find a way to introduce yourself. Like, it's, it's kind of old school, but nobody wants you to just knock on the door and barge in and invite yourself in. When you start showing some, ser like, that you're serious and people then can actually see you and go, oh, shoot, it still takes time. I've still been trying to work with, like... I've been trying to work with some of my friends who are who uh, they used to be in the Usher camp, um, Natural and Valdez and a bunch of amazing musicians for years. And it, now, obviously, I've, I've I've made my way. But you know how long I've been like, so, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey. And sometimes it's just about okay, we know who you are now, but it's like about that right opportunity. Um, I personally have been trying to change that. Um, in LA, I've partnered with a group of really amazing people and we've launched the singers department of the 1826 agency. So I am now working as an agent um, along with um, my director, Janae Lynch, and we are trying to change that. Wow. And create a place for people to come and have opportunities so it's still very we're not trying to change the system as far as the networking thing is because it is all you know and I can't force musical directors to hire people they don't know or don't want to work with but at least now there's a bit more of a place now I'm it's not just come one come all because everything that I've done um the way I've been suggested has been referral based based on my work and vice versa like I have to know you I have to know that you're good and that you know so I can't just recommend but at least myself and my team have a system in place where we can start at least introducing you, trying to get you into these auditions, trying to do pitches, introduce you to these different 
um, musical directors or casting directors so that they can have some opportunities. At the same time, there's a bit of a development component, and I'm in the process of developing most of the singers just to get them a little bit more polished because a lot of the times it's it's you, they just don't know and mm -hmm. there's no one really teaching them and it's kind of the school of hard knocks which i'm all about i feel like you should go through a bit of that but i also do feel like f even for me it would have been nice to have a little bit of a pipeline as a dancer i had that um as singers don't really have that so you kind of just start out in the local club singing and gigging and hey and you're having a drink and then oh where are you performing tomorrow i'd love to come. and it's just it's you know an, and it takes no time here, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but uh, that i think that also um breeds um patience and hard work and diligence and if you really want it then you'll, you'll go through the steps it's not the youtube generation and i'm gonna launch a video and then now i'm it doesn't happen that way there's mm. still the process so i like that about it but it would just be nice to have a couple more open doors mm -hmm. yeah so you know you just have to really want to do it but again it's, it's part of the journey and the experience of you know i've met so many amazing people and like i said a ton of them i still have never worked with but we're all super cool friends and yeah. i'll go support them on their gigs and it, you know it's actually nice to sometimes not work with them and but then being able to go support them live when they do their own bands or just go to a jam session and all and all and and kick it um but unfortunately i also do miss a lot of my musician friends because without our gigs i i, I don't get to see them as much yes mm -hmm. yeah but you know it's just it's part of that hustle you've, you've just got to do it you've got to stay you've got to stay on it and just be everywhere sing as much as you can um and then when you do that get that opportunity like really learn like don't just be like i've arrived like what can you learn like i did choir vocals but it was very different when I had to go sing background. Like I was like, oh, but I'm a sponge and I'm actually, I like to be a student. So I'm happy to like, not steal your knowledge, but like really learn, like, how do you do? I remember when I was dancing for Mariah, I literally would sit under the stage and I'd like, and I'd sit under where the BVs were and I would listen to them all the time. And then I would go to their rooms, Melanie Daniels, for instance. Um, and I was like, which one does the, I would like, I literally picked all their brains. Um, cause I used to study all her backgrounds all the time and, um, Nikki Richards, um, another one of her background vocalists, uh, she would, she taught me how to do breathy. She, she taught me how to do the breathy vocal. It was so breathy, but there was still tone. And I was like, and she did this long and I was like, how do you do? And she like, I would literally pick their brains. I just wanted to know how they created these beautiful. And I was like, who sings what? And I, that's what I did. So if you get an opportunity to, to be around more than just trying to get someone's gig, maybe just try to learn like how they do their job and learn some tips and then take that to what you're doing. And hopefully your skills will build and eventually things will kind of click at some point. And kick it. And, and kick, kick it. it. Like, you have like to kick, yeah. you have to kick it. I don't know what that means. Does it mean smack that's, a whole, like, that's like a whole other podcast. Like it's like you said yesterday on the old, on the old, on the old text message. <laughs> oh, what did I say? Uh, popping. <laughs> I said. Oh, oh yeah. I said, said popping here. Did you pop here? Did you pop in? Yeah. <laughs> did I say what's popping or we'll get yeah, it popping or it's on a pop something? Popping, it's popping. Yeah, yeah. Happening. Which isn't popping. Pop no. In. Different. It's not pop into the studio. No. No. Oh no. Yeah. Pop round. Pop in. No. It's not oh, that. Okay. It's it's uh, what's popping. Like what's popping. What's happening. What's happening? Really so, confused. Yeah. I'll try it. <laughs> don't. I don't it's, think it suits me. You guys have your own stuff. Don't worry about it. But what, kick so it is just you? kick it is like just hanging out, just chill. Okay. So like whatever you do, if you if it's if it's going to the pub and just having a drink or after a show, just hanging around and just kicking it. Just mm, kicking. kicking it. Yeah, just kicking it. <laughs> sometimes, honestly, like sometimes that's what you just have to do because everything else then is so fake and forced. And people are like, hey, you're not really my friend, and I've got friends to look out for yes right, so how yeah. do you get in and and that it just it takes time mm -hmm. and even i think it's the actual mindset and approach to all of this which yeah. is what, when i'm listening to you it's what i'm thinking about the whole time is actually mm -hmm. if you go from extremes of somebody finishes the um um their school or wherever they've mm -hmm. gone with their training yeah um and come out and there can often probably be a mindset of okay i've done all my training now jobs yeah no and the expectancy yeah as opposed to yeah what i'm feeling from you which is like this is a lifestyle i love it and yeah that's, and i look i the reason why i sit under and listen to bvs mm -hmm. and the reason why i come into like even today like you you're very successful and okay. you could say that you you, you pop into london <laughs> and immediately you know to us you're like you're about 
Warrior. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, and, and it's um, and that isn't because you're trying to force networking. No, because you just because you guys are amazing. Like even because I mean the times that I've seen you, we've hung, <laughs> that we've hung, we but it's been like I mean honestly, how much did we talk? during it, the intensive, yeah. like maybe at lunch, it was a high, or if we yeah, happened to yeah, sit at the just, same table, but then being pulled, oh, I've got, to, I've got to do this class, or I've got da da da, or like, there was so much going on, it. so not really being able to actually just hang, I haven't seen you in a minute, and so it's like, like I'm gonna see, see Lynn later, it, it's just, I don't know, for me, it's a bit new, because I've never had this kind of community. So I started in the dance community, and then I moved to sort of the singer and musician community, and now it's like this whole other community of people that are musicians and singers, but like business people, coaches, like, it's a whole other, and I'm just, I always like to learn and grow and expand and do more, and just, and you guys are like, you're basically like family, but in another country. I like the creative process, I like the journey, and you have to be open to, the journey, or you're gonna block blessings, you're gonna block opportunities, you know? And I think that, going back to the mindset, is what um, will carry you, no matter what you end up doing. Whoa, whoa, whoa there. That's English for stop a horse, and stop the cameras right here, or just let them die, like they did on, on the, the day. day. This is where we interject, and we asked Dinosh the question from this sofa. We asked her it in person. But the question is, a listener question from, who was it from? Huh? Who was the question from? Oh. <coughs> Julie? Julie? Anderson? What, is it? what does she do? Warehouse? It's a fake name. The question... Fake name. The qu the qu they didn't want to be named. The question is, if you want to be a background vocalist, how do you deal with the demands of having to change constantly? Almost like a vocal chameleon. Mm. This is Dinosh. Julie Anderton? I would suggest, yeah, Anderton. Yeah, I definitely would suggest definitely. now, you know, now being off of uh, out of the West End, you just have to see, you have to stay on your training. And, you know, unfortunately, you don't, like I said, you don't always get to choose what it is, but if you want that opportunity, you just have to make a point to train your voice and, and stay on it. I find that, I mean, two years is a long time, and hopefully in that two years you've done some other singing, and depending on how, um, how, much, um, how much energy and effort you've had to put into that and how much it takes out of you, hopefully you've had enough vocally that you can do other stuff around it. But if you're not able to, then you go into that period. Like, whenever I come off of a gig or a tour, I go into training mode. I go straight into training mode. I come off a tour, I go into dance class, I sit down with my vocal coach, I'm like, okay, right, I've been doing this, I need to, I haven't sung up here in a minute, I need to like hear myself again. I had this one vocal coach that was like, I need to beat the background out of you. <laughs> cause he was like, cause he's like, oh, you're singing like a background singer. You're singing like a background singer. And I was like, but it is a whole mentality and it's a way that you sort of pepper yourself and you kind of tame your vocal and you blend and it's very, you know, and then you've got to step out and be a bit more, you know, put more inflections and I have to work on my vocal agility, my like my runs and, you know, I was lucky when I sang with Alicia that we did a lot of runs as background singers, but then I've got gigs where I've got to like, it's more pop rock, you got to smooth that joint out, you got to like, you know, it, it's very different. Especially with Robbie, I go back and forth from doing lead vocals and, uh, um, and background vocals. So I get, I do get a lot of exercise on this, but all it's made me, is all it's reinforced is the fact that you just have to always be as a vocalist. You just have to be on it. You have to be ready. You have to stay working on your voice. And mo I find most people that do musical theater are quite agile. Um, they can, like I've heard them sing this and then they, I'm like, whoa, where'd that come from? Um, but sometimes that can take a toll if you've not done it in a minute. Mm. So just always, you know, stay on your training and, and, and make sure you're preparing for whatever that next thing is because you're just not sure. You just don't know. And by minute, you mean a long time, don't you? I think it's <laughs> Did I say it again? Yeah, you said it again. <laughs> yeah, it's a long time. Yeah, it's just, it's, it, it's the opposite. It means ages. I <laughs> 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 haven't done it in a minute. A minute. I haven't yeah. done it in a minute. Like, so you stress the minute. You stress the minute, very, that just means it's, long. yeah, it's been forever. Right. Yeah, you haven't done it. What do you guys say in like a something's age? A ages. Ages? In, in, ages. Age. in an age. Since, since the late 80s. Late like, <laughs> 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 it's, it's quite a long time. Ago, but, yeah, get, obviously, it gets longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Longer away. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but no, it, it's, it just means you just, 
you need to pay attention to and you haven't visited in quite a while, quite some time, so. <laughs> yeah. So in, in, to, to Julie, it may not, it's the nature of the beast. It is. And there may not be, like most things in life, a quick fix. Um, but uh, keep working at it, Julie. Yeah, I, I think it's really just making the effort. I really personally think it's just, I'm singing. I remember, like, I came up, I was doing, perfect example, I was singing for Colby Calais. Very just slow, chilled, uh, simple, really. Said, like, I don't think I went higher than here. Like, it was really easy. Like, really easy. And I came home and I was like, right, I'm ready to sing again. Like, really, just, oh, I want something beastie. And I took a Kelly Clarkson song to Dave and, and I was doing it and I was, it, uh, it was because of you. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, her voice, she's just like, Ugh. And Dave was, I was like, okay, I can't do that, but I want to sing that. Like, help me get there. And we were working on it, working on it. Unfortunately, I was having some vocal issues that were getting in the way, but that's the kind of thing that I do. I come off of tour and I'm like, okay, ready to do something different. I just, I like to switch it up. I like mm -hmm. the difference. And I think that the, the, the the, the real big issue is that singers don't like to sound bad. Mm. So I think, I, I, would, I, would, I would question if, if Julie's be. maybe just like, oh, I don't sound good singing that. Mm. I want to do what's comfortable, but you really can't, or you won't grow, you won't build that. And then you'll, you'll just have the trouble of not being able to do other stuff. So you really just have to say, I don't really care. That's the purpose of training and rehearsal and practice is to get to sound, is to work with, to sound good. Mm. And you'll sound good at some point. Just have to put the work in. Yeah, awesome. Awesome stuff there from Dinosh. The only thing that's left to know, I'm sure you're thinking is, how do I get hold of Dinosh if I want to contact her? And how do you? Well, she's going to tell us. Great. Well, you can follow me on Instagram. It's yeah. just Dinosh Bennett, D-E-N-O-S-H. Got in there first. B-E-N-N-E-T-T. -T. Um, <laughs> I'm on Facebook under the same name. And um, I've just, yeah, I've got my email address, which is noshness at gmail.com. Noshness. Noshness. <laughs> took some time to think of that one. Uh, I actually off, didn't off. come up with it. It was a producer who named me, who named, he basically said my attitude, it's it's the name for my attitude, it's my noshness. He basically told me to calm all that noshness down. Oh, oh. I like it. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to whip that one out. Noshness. Time. You're gonna be, wow. <laughs> it's like all that noshness, it was just, it was, I was a lot, whatever. Um, but you but are yeah, also my... a tutor at the Vocalize You Summer Intensive I most am. years yeah. and, and the winter yeah, yeah, retreats yeah. as well. Absolutely. So hopefully, I don't know if I'm actually going to be in person next year. Um, but uh, with the performance track that I've that we've been working on and we d we've been developing, we'll definitely be there, and I'll have I'll be in touch with with creating it and uh, overseeing, overseeing it, absolutely now. directing so it, happens. and uh, faculty or something like that, whatever. But it'll be I'll be I'll definitely be part of that as well. Awesome. So, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much for having. It's so good to like kick it, sit and chill. Sit and chill. You know, hang a, hang a vibe. <laughs> Am I kicking it at the moment? Is that kicking oh, it? Oh, I Yes, Let yes, it's definitely. Yeah, yes, it's not guns and abs. Yes, yeah, yeah, guns yeah. and abs. <laughs> <laughs> Am I kicking oh, it? Oh, that was an no. inadvertent display of my uh, uh, assets. <laughs> yes. I, I didn't think about it. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. I'll have some of that. On that note. Peace. Where are we looking? Thank you very much, Dinos. Oh, thanks we for having will, me. It's um, so good to see you guys. Let's hug it out. Come on. Yeah, so oh, let's, uh, let's muffle your microphone Muffle my mic. No, thanks for having me. It's been fun. I've been like dying to get on this. Whatever this be in this form with you guys. Spot. I know, I know. Thanks for the, the allowing me to uh, be a part of it. Um, so, if you want to find out more uh, about this, uh, any supporting information, if you'd rather just read it, <laughs> some people do, uh, then you can get across to thenakedvocalist.com. Um, but also, where would you like people to go and um, slag us off? Um, on no your slagging. favorite page. Yeah. <laughs> So. Great. Okay, read it out. <laughs> yeah. um, Chris Johnson, vocal coach. <laughs> Facebook. Go and do it. Thanks, yeah. then. Leave cheers. Me one star. See ya. <laughs> I said cheers. <laughs> you did. Do you know I say that all the time okay. now? Off she trots. Oh, she is running. Yep, that's what all she does. All the way back to Canada. <laughs> it's a ruddy long way. Yeah. And a lot of water, I think, on the way there. Hope you enjoyed that one. <laughs> we did. Uh, sorry about the technical m mishaps, um, but uh, please do get in touch with us if you have any questions at all, thenakedvocalist.com. But for now, just like, you know, try and make it a good year, yes? Happy New Year, everyone. Good. <laughs>